This is the RT95 from Retivus, uh, also known as the Anytone AT778UV and a couple of other similar models as well. This is a mobile ham radio. It will do 25 watts maximum output power and uh, it's actually quite a nice radio. The first thing you notice is the TFT color screen here on the front. You can see that there is an S meter here starting at the top from S1, S3, S5, S7 and S9 and that lights up as a bar graph once you're receiving a signal. You've got your frequency here in the middle which you can set using the rotary dial here and you can change the steps that the frequency changes up and down um, as you require in the menu. You've also got here a sub receiver which is not a dual receive or a full duplex radio type system. It is a dual watch so you can only listen to one signal at a time. Nevertheless, it is down here with a smaller um, S meter as well. And rounding off the bottom, you can see that there is a DC power level, so you can see what your voltage is on your radio. The radio comes with a couple of things. One is a programming cable, so you can actually program this using Chirp as well. So that's uh, very handy. And the fact that it actually comes with the programming cable is also great, that you don't have to go trying to find that yourself. It just comes here with a USB plug on one end and a RJ45 to plug into the front of the mic connector of the radio for programming. What surprised me the most about this radio was the fact that it is relatively easy to drive and to operate. If you have a look here, you hold down the function button, you get into a menu which consists of five menus which you can go through here and set your various parameters that you need. If we go into the function menu here, the key one or the first one that you should set is the beep. Um, if this is set by default out of the box, it's rather a loud, annoying beep, which you probably don't want. So you can turn that all the way down to off. There's also some other functions here in this menu that you might want to look through here, squelch, volume, etc. But these can also be set using these P1 to P6 menu items as well. There's actually quite a lot in here and uh, obviously all of this is documented in the manual, so I don't need to go through it now, but it's pretty well set up. You'll notice that there's these functions here which go down the side of the screen that correspond to P1 to P6. By tapping on these, AB, you can see there is the changing of the VFOs. VM is the VFO to memory and I've got no memories programmed into this radio so it's giving me an error. There's also a monitor button where you can instantly listen to the uh, audio. If you want to open up the squelch, there's a Vox button. Squelch here, if we tap on that and you can see squelch level three. By using the dial here, I can set the squelch to what I need and I'm just gonna leave it at three. Volume here, you can turn the volume all the way up to 36, I think, 36. But uh, that usually I find about 25 is pretty much uh, as high as you probably need to go. Uh, speaking of volume two, there is a speaker here in the radio, but one thing that I haven't shown you is the microphone. There is also a speaker here in the microphone and there are programmable buttons here on the microphone as well. So I'll look into that in a little bit more detail shortly. Tapping the function button once goes into the second of these menus and you can change the direction. Now DIR, I thought, shifted the frequency direction, but it actually, oh, let's go back. It actually flips the screen upside down and that's where this mounting bracket comes in. So you can mount this radio upside down if you want to somewhere or if it's in a bit of an awkward place, you can flip the screen. And it's quite interesting because I've never seen this done in a radio before and it even flips the buttons that you need to press to flip the screen. So that's a little bit of a nifty, nifty feature. Uh, if you click shift, this will open up the frequency shift menu, which you need for repeater operations. So you've got minus, no offset and plus. There is also a scan button here. That is rather slow, I've noticed, but you might have only a certain number of channels which you need to put into scan groups. There is also a power button, so low, medium and high. The radio also supports uh, CTCSS and DCS tones as well, so you can select those here. So there's T uh, or the transmit tone. If we tap on that, I can then select CTCSS or DCS and click the volume knob again, and I can select 
whatever tone, sorry not volume knob, the function selector knob, I can select whatever tone that I need for my repeater. Now I briefly showed the microphone and this has a full DTMF keypad which you can use to dial up um, All-Star, IRLP, Echo Link nodes, etc. You can also use it to select the frequency. So if we directly enter 146.500, we're good to go. And there's a bright blue AB button. I'm not quite sure why they decided to light the VFO button up uh, so brightly, but it also changes here on the microphone, which is rather cool. Now I mentioned before that there's two speakers. So there's one in the bottom and by default, that's the one that is set. So if I tap the monitor button, that is the audio coming out of the radio. If I hold down function and go into the menus here and I select my speaker here in the function menu, I can select the main radio and also the microphone as well. So this will then mean that both speakers will be running. So that's coming out of both and go to hand, this will be only the hand microphone. Which obviously is a lot lower and I'm going to do some audio tests to show you how that sounds because this radio surprisingly has fantastic audio and for the price of this radio at currently it's about $129. Um, I think that this is a fantastic buy for those who are looking for an upgrade from say a handheld radio to Maybe you could use this in your base station um, as a base station VHF UHF unit, or if you did want to use this in the vehicle, then obviously you could also use it for that too. VK7HH, testing the audio from the main speaker. I'm using a Yaesu VX8, testing the audio from the main speaker. Now testing the audio from the hand microphone speaker. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. So the next test I want to do is audio level test just to see what it sounds like on the air. So let's just dial up the Parrot um, All Star Link node, which is usually what I use to test these things. So I'm just going to use mine and we'll see how we go. You notice how DTMF tones actually appear on the bottom of what you're sending, so that's pretty cool. VK7HH testing audio level of Retivus RT95. One, two, three, four, five. Audio level is normal. VK7HH testing audio level of Retivus RT95. One, two, three, four, five. Now you'll notice there was a slight little hum on the audio there, and I think that's because my All Star Link node is about <laughs> a meter away, so there's probably a bit of RF getting in there. Yeah, I'm just testing a, uh, a new radio here at the moment. I hope it all sounds good. Beautiful audio, not a problem. Sounds, uh, sounds really good. Very, very easy to listen to. It's quite nice, it's powerful, it's not overdriven, but it's just, well, you know, <laughs> I know everybody, it's a lot uh, clean and beautiful. Some of the um, mobile or uh, handheld radios leave a lot to be desired for my old ears, Hayden, but uh, yeah, but that's all I can say, young fella, it's perfect. I've set up the radio for high power and we're on the calling channel here in VK. Let's just zoom up there, let's just read what power level we've got. And we've got 22 watts, which is not quite the 25 specified, but it's not too far off. It's only off by a couple of watts. Let's now back that off to me, uh, medium power. Medium power is 14 watts. And the low power setting is 4.33. Doing the same test on UHF now. So we've changed our frequency to 440. High power is 23.3 watts, medium power or mid power is 14.7, and low power being almost exactly 5 watts. Now let's have a look at the spectral purity there. That is looking pretty good. That's our carrier 0.2 megahertz span. Let's just pop that out a little bit further to a 2 megahertz span. Looking okay. We've got no, no funny spurs or anything there, so that's all looking good. Let's go to our second harmonic of 293 megahertz and we're way down there it's might negative negative 16 almost negative 17 so we're looking good there let's go to our 
third harmonic. Third harmonic on 439, 500. Look at that, hardly visible. So that's looking pretty clean. So I've got a center frequency of 300 megahertz with a span of 350 megahertz. We can see here's our fundamental. There's our second harmonic and we can't even see our third harmonic, although I think my span's not wide enough there. Let's just increase it even more to 500 megahertz. And that is looking mighty clean to me. That is fantastic to see. And it's a similar story with the second harmonic on UHF. So I'm transmitting here on 440. Here at 880, it's hardly even visible. So one thing that I did notice about the radio is that it has a frequency range of 144 to 146 and 430 to 440 in EU. In the US it's 144 to 148 and 430 to 440 uh, available there. Now that's okay except the problem is is that I have my all-star node on 440, 150 and we have access up to 450 megahertz here and I can't select that frequency. If you try to dial it in, it just goes straight to 440. Luckily there is a way around this though, by powering off the radio, if you hold in function and the P4 button and then turn the radio on at the same time, it goes into this test mode and we just need to move our dial up to channel 043 and you'll see there that it is in mode one. If we actually hold down the PTT now of the radio, you can select mode two, let go of the PTT, power off, power back on. And now if we enter in our frequency of 440150, we can enter in the frequency. Now by doing this mod, it opens up the frequency coverage from 136 right up to 174 on VHF. And on UHF, it's all the way from 400 megahertz right up to 490 megahertz. Of course, make sure that you only transmit where you are licensed to do so. I didn't expect that this radio would be that good. I was getting glowing audio reports. Um, it sounds fantastic. It's tiny, so you can fit it in the smallest of spaces, the smallest of vehicles. You could put this on the dash or pretty much anywhere. Um, so yeah, it's a great radio. I actually really, really like this. Um, so there is a link in the description below if you wanna pick up one of these radios. Uh, that link does help support this channel. So I thank you guys for using that link. And also, if you could give this video a thumbs up, I'd really, really appreciate it. I do many other review videos on different radios, so make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss out on those. And some of those will pop up on the screen if you wanna check them out.